Hey friend, welcome to Self Transformed, a podcast redefining self-care through simple fitness, nutrition, and mindset habits. I'm your host, Emily Nichols, certified personal trainer, Whole30 coach, and Taco Tuesday enthusiast. (laughs) Hey, I know the struggle is real when it comes to taking care of you. I too am a busy working mom who felt physically and emotionally drained until I took action on my own transformation journey. I finally found the solutions to feeling confident and living a healthy lifestyle that doesn't feel hard and now I'm on a mission to equip you with sustainable tools to help transform your life from the inside out guilt free. Together, we will simplify your health and fitness into daily habits that don't feel like another thing on your long to-do list, but daily actions that light you up instead. So if you're ready to redefine self-care and step into your own self-transformation, then let's do this. You're listening to episode 118 of Self Transformed. Hey friend, welcome back to the show. I hope you are having an amazing Monday so far. I am actually pre-recording this while in Florida with my family. We always go to Desden every October for fall break. And let me tell you, my boys just live for this week. There's something magical about the beach where everyone is just living their best life. So couple of reminders here before we get into this conversation today. First of all, I just have to shout out my Self Transform You Live girls. They just finished their six-week transformation, and I am so proud of them and the new habits they have established and that they're going to turn this into a lifestyle. It's not just six weeks and you're done. If you want to try out Self Transform You, you can buy the course at any time at selftransformyou.com and begin cultivating a health plan that doesn't feel hard right? I provide you all the tools. I provide the workouts, the food freedom method, the mindset shift, and the habit strategies to make it all work, but it's you. That's why it's called self-transformed you. You take those tools and transform it into your lifestyle. Now, let me tell you this. You have to actually take action though. You just can't do it and rely on me. I can help motivate you, inspire you, but you are the one that needs to take action. If you're wanting to do this live with me, again, I will be hosting Self Transform You Lie in January. So you'll be able to go through the course together in a group setting with more access to me as well. There's going to be some new changes coming to STU in the new year as well. So if you want to get in on the live STU coming up January 2022, which isn't that far away, you can also sign up for the wait list at selftransformyou.com slash live. So another reminder. I have our next free workshop coming up in our Facebook community. You can go to bit.ly slash self transformed fam. There's a link in the show notes as well. We're going to be hosting a a free workshop on jealousy on the 27th at 12 p.m. Eastern in our Facebook group. Come on over. It will be 15 minutes or less because I know you're busy. I always do a quickie workshop, but this was voted on by the community. And, you know, we talked about comparison on the podcast last week, and then we're going to take it a step deeper and talk about it together in the uh, Facebook group talking about jealousy and um, how that's an emotion that sometimes comes up for people and three tips to help you transform your mindset when it comes to jealousy. And make sure you keep listening to the show. I'm starting a a little mini three-part habit series starting on 11.3 that you don't want to miss. And then one more free workshop coming up. So make sure you're a part of the community. I have a really super cool announcement coming up. And if you're part of the community, you get to know first. Okay. That's all the announcements. Let's get into today's episode. So today we are talking about your thyroid health. This is something I'm super interested in. I think the thyroid is such a small little gland that can throw so many things off. And I've been wanting to bring someone on because I've had my own um, thyroid issues in the past. And I talk about it a little bit in this episode And as I was doing my research, I came across Shannon Hansen. She is the host of the Thriving Thyroid podcast. And y'all, get your pen and paper handy. (laughs) She is going to give you so many great tools and change the way you think about 
your thyroid health. So let me tell you a little bit about Shannon. So Shannon Hansen has quickly become a leader of holistic nutrition. She has certificates as a holistic wellness practitioner, functional nutrition practitioner, and a life coach. This is really cool. She's also co-authored a book, and she passionately educates women with thyroid imbalances to gain freedom from fatigue by removing chronic triggers and replenishing their body so they can restore their health quickly and stop and stop sleeping their way through life. That's why this show is called, Is It Your Thyroid or Are You Just Exhausted? I love this. She's going to give you a lot of really great tips to think about your thyroid health and what you can do holistically, naturally to help balance it out. And I'll share a little bit um, at the end of the episode. As always, my three biggest takeaways to help you take action in regards to your thyroid health. Okay. Shannon's also a Christian entrepreneur as well as a wife and mother of three beautiful girls. And she has another baby on the way and she enjoys gardening and working on their mini farm with her animals. She speaks with such a calmness about, um, thyroid health in such a way that makes it easy to understand. So like I said, make sure you have your pen and paper handy and enjoy this episode all on thyroid health with Shannon Hansen of the Thriving Thyroid Podcast. All right, gang. Thank you so much again for tuning in to Self Transform. I am so excited to have my guest on the show today to talk all about thyroid health. Friends, welcome Shannon Hansen to Self Transform. Shannon, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thank you, Emily, for having me. I'm so excited to dig into this conversation. It's something I'm personally interested in as well. And I know a lot of um, the women listening will be able to have a pen and paper handy, ready to take a lot of notes as well. But before we get started, the first question I ask every guest is what does the phrase self-transformed mean to you? So I love this question and I gave it kind of a lot of thought as I went through this process. And I have a story from when I was about 17 years old. So I was going through this period of time in my life where like most of us, I'm trying to figure out like who I am and where I fit into this world. And I grew up with a mom who was very religious. We went to church. We had certain standards and expectations for our home, the way that we live, the way that we speak, the way that we conduct ourselves, you know, And I went and lived with my dad who, um, my parents were divorced. So I went and lived with my dad and my dad was kind of polar opposite. Um, he would say things like, well, you can be a good person and not go to church. And, you know, if you're going to drink, don't drive. And if you're going to have sex, you know, use protection and, you know, which is very different than what I grew up with my mom. And so I'm kind of testing the waters (laughs) a little bit, you know, I'm going out with friends and you know, experimenting and wearing clothes that maybe are a little more revealing than my mom would ever allow me to leave the house in. And I remember being around people and they were like, oh, you go to church? You know, like they had no idea that I had faith and that I believed in God and that, you know, these certain things were important to me. And it got me thinking what is the life that I really want to live? You know, what's the kind of person that I want to marry and what kind of house and what kind of family and all of these different things. And to make kind of a long story short, I decided to change the way that I dressed and the way that I spoke and the language that I was using. And then it was like all of a sudden, everybody was like, oh, you go to church? Oh yeah, which church do you go to? Like they just knew because of the way that I was carrying myself. And so self-transformation for me is this inside out kind of approach. And I think it's just really important that we, we look at the person that we are in our heart. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And that's so true. It's more about the, the inside out transformation. And I can relate to that. I remember working a job really early outside of college and someone said the same thing to me, like, oh, you go to church. And it was like, Yes. Am I not like projecting that, you know, I'm a person of faith and I believe in God. I'm like, I'm being so nice to everyone. And I'm like, not cussing or anything like that. You know what I mean? But that I, I totally felt that when you said that for sure. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. 
Oh my goodness. Well, and it's takes some time to figure out who you want to be. And that's always ever evolving, which we talk a lot about here on self transform. So let's talk a little bit more about your story, Shannon, and kind of a little bit more about what you do today and what has led you to what you do today. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of my stories are really long. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to give you guys kind of <laughs> the watered down version. So I always wanted to be a mom. I always wanted to be a stay at home mom, married a guy who is very supportive of that grew up with a stay at home mom. And that's just what you do. And so he went back to, so we had our first baby and he would come home every day and he's like, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Okay, great. Well, guess what? We have kids. We have responsibilities. We got to figure it out (laughs) because we got married young. Um, I was 20. He was 21. And we knew each other, we met at 14. So it wasn't like, (laughs) you know, it was, it was very planned out. And uh, so he went back to school. I had my first baby, got pregnant with my second, had my second. And I was watching my husband and my sister both go to school. And I was watching them develop as a person. And I was like, I want that. I saw my sister become a better mom and more attentive and better educated and could speak up for her kids a little bit better because she was gaining the confidence. And I saw that same evolution in my husband. And so we sat down and talked about it. He was like, yeah, I'm, you know, in full support of you finishing your college. And, you know, but really the conversation was, it was for personal development. So he's like, just pick something that you want, you know, not something that you can go make a ton of money of. Um, and I was like, okay, great. So I started looking, I thought, you know, oh, I'm going to do herbal medicine. And then I couldn't find a program and then transferred into, um, as a holistic practitioner. And I remember thinking, and I laugh about this all the time. I remember thinking, oh, I should learn about nutrition. Yeah. I cook for my family and, you know, um, herbal medicine. Yeah. That, okay. Uh, knowing a little bit about that and aromatherapy and all of these different things. <laughs> So I really went to learn those things to help my family, you know, as I say, like a first line of defense, you know, learning about essential oils and homeopathy and things like that. And little by little, people were like, oh, you know about that. And they would ask me questions. And I finally got to the point where I was like, I need to charge people for this. (laughs) And again, long story short, one thing led to another, um, started charging. I charged next to nothing. And I remember just kind of hitting my knees and I was like, I can't do this. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I was charging $20 for an office visit, office visit, air quotes, um, <laughs> it, it, at my kitchen table. And then I was doing all this work afterwards. And I'm a mom and I was just getting burnt out. And that, so I, I just told Heavenly Father, I was like, I'm done. I'm, I'm not going to do this anymore. This is not for me. And he said, like, he was like, yeah, okay. Well, starting a couple months later, I had about five people come to me and say, hey, I want to hire you. And I doubled my prices. So I went up to $50 and they were like, yeah, great. They wrote me a check paid in full for, you know, like, three months. And I was like, Oh, (laughs) so that kind of kicked off everything. And then I decided meeting with people one-on-one was really difficult having three kids at my kitchen table, (laughs) Um, you know, trying to find babysitters and everything. So then I moved everything online um, in 2020, uh, January, 2020. And then the world changed in March. So (laughs) Awesome. So that is an amazing story. And you really came from such a nurturing place to want to be able to, you know, have that personal development, but still be able to give back to your family and what you were doing as well. I think so many working moms listening to the show could totally relate to that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So tell us a little bit more about what you do in regards to thyroid health. This is something I'm super interested in. You're the host of the thriving thyroid podcast. And I'll tell you a little bit about my story. Once you explain a little bit more about 
that little, little gland, the thyroid, and how it can be such a little troublemaker sometimes. So what does it mean when someone has a thyroid imbalance? So the first thing that I tell everybody when it comes to thyroid is thyroid is actually a secondary condition. Um, it's not a primary condition. So if we peel back all of the layers and we get to the heart and soul of if your body is let's say reacting. So even if you have um, autoimmune conditions, Graves or Hashimoto's, if your body is showing up as hypothyroidism, it's a mineral or a nutrient deficiency. So what we do is we, <laughs> we balance out those nutrients that you need. If you have, again, peeling back all of the layers and getting to the root, if it's hyperthyroid that you're responding to, then it's a pH balance inside the body. So what I do is we test women, we listen to them, we look at their symptoms, and then we go through and we, we do, um, it's called an HTMA testing. HTMA stands for hair trace mineral analysis. So you basically cut off a little bit of your hair, you mail it into the lab. And from there, they analyze it and we get a, a nutrition profile. From that nutrition profile, we're looking at your toxic load, um, what things could be throwing you off balance, but then also how the body is reacting or responding, how your liver is uptaking nutrients, converting nutrients, your kidneys. Um, a lot of our clients, especially when we're dealing <laughs> with chronic issues like Hashimoto's, we see other secondary conditions. So because of this testing, we've been able to help women figure out, hey, yes, you have a thyroid, but you also have, um, you know, lupus, or you also have Crohn's, or you also have, you know, ulcerative colitis or something like that, where they're going to the doctor and they're like, I don't know what's wrong. They keep throwing medication at me, you know, which is a very common story, or they tell you everything is normal with your thyroid, um, which is, happened to me. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's kind of a nutshell of what I do. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really interesting. You say that because probably about, I think it was two and a half years ago, I thought I was having a thyroid issue. I was feeling very fatigued. I was feeling run down. Granted, I was training for a half marathon at the time, doing a lot of extra workouts and I was running myself into the ground. And at the same time, I started gaining weight, which I was like, why am I gaining weight when I'm being super duper active? Um, but I was running myself into the ground is really what I was doing. And I was like, you know, I really feel like I should go get my thyroid checked. I feel like something maybe is a little off. So I go to my doctor and they're like, everything's good. Um, Cause I was in within their levels that they see. But then from there, I went and saw um, a functional doctor and was able to, like you said, really dig deep into the root cause of what was going on. We figured out what was going on, got me on the right supplementation, talked about the way I was eating, the way I was active as well, and uh, dialing it back a little bit as well. And everything balanced out. I was like, literally like, point one away from like where it was like the imbalance level or whatnot. And like just that little bit could kind of throw things off a little bit and it's small little adjustments. And I feel like if I would have pushed it a little bit more with my doctor, they probably would just throw me on some type of medication and I would have never figured that out. You know what I mean? Do you find that a lot yeah. within other women? I know you mentioned it happened to you as well. Yeah. I mean, that's really common. Um, I mean, I could tell you all kinds of horror stories. And the interesting thing with thyroid, um, depending on where you're at and, you know, we can be way over here and it could be really, really bad, or it could just be kind of a minor thing, which sounds like maybe what you were experiencing, you were doing some things, some lifestyle things, thinking, Hey, this is healthy exercising, but just pushing your body a little bit too hard. Um, and so some of these women, Again, depending on where, where they're falling in, it could be a, a small adjustment, drinking more water, dialing back the exercise, or it could be like a bigger, a bigger issue. 
Hey girl, jumping in on this conversation really quick to make sure you know that my signature program, Self Transform You, is open for enrollment. This is my signature six-week coaching program that is going to give you a realistic and simple, keyword simple, health and fitness plan that you will actually stick with forever. This is backed by proven habit strategies, gang, in order to help you transform from the inside out and really redefine self-care through simple fitness, nutrition, and mindset habits so you can start being confident, empowered, and just lit up and living the life you were meant to live. So trust me, I know what it feels like to feel like you don't have any time to get healthy and fit and you feel self-conscious in your own skin, yet you find yourself on the newest diet again only to fail, feel frustrated, and gain all the way back. So I remember wanting to find a food freedom and fitness plan that would actually fit into my busy life without it feeling like another thing on my to-do list. So if you have ever found yourself saying, I feel like I'm always starting and stopping a new diet. I wish I could stop obsessing over food and the scale. I wish I liked working out. I wish I could find the time and do this guilt-free then Self Transform You is going to help transform your life. So go to Self Transform You, the letter U, dot com to enroll in this six week program now. I will be there for you as your coach, your mentor, and your friend. I've seen it transform my own client's life, and I know it can transform yours too, friends. So again, go to Self Transform You dot com, and I'll see you in STU. Yeah, yeah. So what, so you talked about, you know, a little bit about like the nutrients you're bringing in. Can food be a way to kind of help balance out your thyroid? Yes, absolutely. So for the month of October in like my program online, I'll just say online, Facebook, um, Instagram, we are covering all things food related. So there are what I call key thyroid nutrients for your thyroid. And these key thyroid nutrients, they perform three major functions for your thyroid. The first one, they contribute to the production of thyroid hormone, or they help increase the conversion of T4 into T3. So T4 is like your thyroid hormone, and that converts into T3. T3 is your active thyroid hormone, regulating your metabolism, your energy, how you feel, Um, if you're feeling exhausted, things like that. And then third, they contribute to cellular sensitivity. So every single cell in the body needs thyroid hormone. And so we need your cells to be sensitive enough to be able to uptake those nutrients. And if you want, I can give you guys a quick list. Yes, let's do it. I'm super interested in this. Okay. (laughs) So iron, iodine, tyrosine, zinc, selenium, vitamin E, B2, B3, B6, vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin A. Um, And all of those, like I said, they contribute to one of those three main areas. And I gave my group (laughs) um, a little bit of homework this week. And I said, just pick one if you've never heard of it, or if you've maybe heard of it, but aren't familiar with it, go research that one nutrient and find food that contribute, like that helps you get that nutrient. Um, and you know, just make sure that you're eating it in your diet and consuming it on a regular basis. Oh my gosh. I love that so much. I'm going to write that furiously after we (laughs) listen back to this as well. People will have to like put pause, yeah. push pause because I went through them kind of fast. Oh, but. you're great. You're great. Well, and I, I find that such more of a holistic way of healing the way that you feel, you know, if you're feeling fatigued, it's like, oh, I'm just going to drink more coffee. And it's like, well, how about you feel, feel yourself, find out those nutrients you're deficient in and figure out how to, you know, balance it back out. That sounds such more uh, of a sustainable way to be healthy. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is kind of like another little tidbit and it's really geeky and I don't expect you guys to like know this or anything, but (laughs) so a lot, there's this connection between hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's and low stomach acid. Mm. So 
Um, that's why we see a lot of GI issues, gas, bloating, heartburn, indigestion, you know, those types of things um, along with it. And most people won't make that connection. But one of the nutrients that we need for our thyroid, but also to create stomach acid is zinc. And women, because we take birth control and we do great things to our body, <laughs> birth control or I, um, birth control will push down zinc and our copper levels will become elevated. So if you're having hormonal issues, heavy periods, crampiness, you know, those types of things, you might want to look at that. Um, but we need copper and zinc to be in this nice little balance. Um, but if copper gets too elevated because of birth control, it's going to push down zinc. And then we're going to have the gas, the bloating, the heartburn, the indigestion, you know, those GI issues. And that can lead to hypothyroidism and Hashimoto's. And so if we begin to balance these minerals, these nutrients out in the body, then we see it come back into homeostasis and we're able to get to, again, that root cause. So for you, you notice that benefit going to your doctor, taking supplements, you know, and things like that. And that could have been one of the things that contributed to the success that you've seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting that there's usually some other type of root cause that kind of messes up and imbalances your thyroid then. So it's so much, so interesting just finding those small little root causes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I could geek yeah. out on this all day long too. <laughs> this is awesome. This is awesome. Does stress play a, a role in your thyroid imbalance as well? Um, yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, so there is this axis called the HPT stands for hypothalamus pituitary thyroid axis. And this axis basically creates a loop of communication between all of your hormones. And if you're stressed out, whether it be emotional, physical, financial, emotional, whatever the stress is, it's going to mess up that loop. It's going to mess up that communication of the HPT axis, but also the HPA axis. And that stands for hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis. So if our body's dumping um, the hormone cortisol, and we're going to see that belly fat, <laughs> we're going to see that resistant weight loss, and it may get to the point where your body isn't producing cortisol. This is one of the things that happened to me. My cortisol was so low because I burned my body out so hard. Um, <laughs> I was just pushing and going through a lot of those things. And what ended up happening is I started having muscle aches and pains to the point where it was like a fibromyalgia kind of thing. And so I was in chronic pain all the time. And again, saw a functional doctor, a biological doctor actually. And he was like, you're not even registering on this. So anyways, I had to make some changes. He's like, you are not allowed to do anything more than walk um, for exercise. I had a personal trainer. I was going to the gym, you know, I was exercising and I was like, what? <laughs> um, but then within, you know, and, and took supplements, changed my diet, you know, all those things. And within a month that chronic pain went away. Mm -hmm. So I very similar to you, stress was playing a role in how my hormones were reacting. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think people realize how much stress can just affect you. I mean, obviously mentally, but also it affects you like mentally and emotionally and it manifests itself physically in your body. You know, my mom um, had breast cancer a couple of years ago. She's doing amazing now, but she went and saw a functional doctor once she was done with all her treatments. And her, they were like, we have never seen someone's cortisol levels so high. Like it was just the stress on her body, like emotionally and mentally as well. And her thyroid was all messed up to like so many different things depleted her. And for me, um, you know, when I saw my functional doctor, I was suffering from adrenal fatigue as well, just because everything was just so, and what was, I'm glad you brought up, you know, just walking the beauty of just rest and taking it easy. We're so conditioned and taught to just, Oh, work, 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 work. And you know, Oh, you need to lose weight. You just need to work out harder. And that can have such a negative effect, you know, on your body in the long term. That's so interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and 
I'm so happy to hear that your mom is doing much better now, yeah. you know, that can, yeah, I lost my dad to cancer. So it's oh, a tough, tough thing. So, oh yeah, for sure. For sure. So let's kind of wrap up here. What would be like your top three tips? You know, we kind of talked about food and stress, but what would be like your top three stress tips to help someone balance their thyroid? Um, so sleep is going to be a big one. Um, I find kind of like what you were saying, we, as women, we just push ourselves. We're taking care of our house and our kids and our husband and our job and our career and, you know, church and PTA and whatever we can throw on our plate. (laughs) We just add it all up, right? We just put it all on there. We carry it in our backpack. And one of the things that we do as women is we stay up late to try to get everything done. And then we wake up early. And so we're sleeping four or five, six hours a night. And it's not even good sleep because our kids are coming in to our bed. And, (laughs) you know, we got to get up and pee and all the things. Oh, yeah. (laughs) So sleep is going to be really important. And for me, that was a big shift. I found that when I started sleeping seven, eight, nine hours a night, my productivity went up because I had more energy throughout the day. So sleep is going to be a a really big one. Um, Food, nutrition, I think everything builds off of what we're putting in our body. Um, If we can start with sleep and having a little bit more energy, that's going to be better. Um, And then that's going to give you the energy and the motivation to cook good, healthy, clean meals. Mm -hmm. Um, And you guys, don't be afraid to spend a little bit of extra money on cut up broccoli. You know, if cutting a head of broccoli is too much energy and work for you at that moment, buy the bag of broccoli, (laughs) buy the bag of cauliflower so that you can get those nutrients in your body. Um, Another one that I see is really big hydration. And I know a lot of women drink coffee. So I'm going to give you guys this tip wake up. If you're taking thyroid medication, take your thyroid medication and then wait the hour. Um, but don't go straight for that pot of coffee. Instead, eat breakfast and drink your coffee afterwards. Your energy levels for the day are going to be so much better and so much more sustainable. So that will have, again, another really big impact on how you're feeling throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah. I always feel like sometimes coffee is like artificial energy. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, they actually say that an apple will give you more energy than a pot, like a cup of coffee, because with coffee, you're having this energy spike and then you crash. And And so then you have to have another one, whereas an apple will give you the energy, but it will help hold and sustain that energy level. Mm. So get that hydration in ladies. That's for sure. You know, within my programming, we teach, uh, we call it the fab. Well, it was the daily five, but all my clients started calling it the fab five. So it's the fab five habits now. And one of that, two of them includes getting quality sleep and hydration throughout the day, because you're right. We get so busy taking care of everyone else. And a lot of times when you're feeling grumpy or you think you're really hungry or you're tired, or maybe you have a headache, you just haven't been drinking enough water all day, or you've been just chugging a pot of coffee all day, just speaking from experience as well, for sure. So those are really, really great tips. And I know the ladies listening today will be able to take a lot from this episode. They'll have to listen back and take some notes as well. But Shannon, thank you so much for coming on and educating me and educating my audience. I truly, truly appreciate it. Where can everyone connect with you online? Yeah. So if you guys just search Thriving Thyroid, you'll be able to find us. Um, Our Facebook group is Thriving Thyroid Balanced Community on Instagram, Thriving Thyroid Podcast, Thriving Thyroid. So, um, yep, you can find us all over. That's amazing. Well, Shannon, thank you again so much for coming on the show and educating us all. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for this conversation, Shannon. I loved listening back to it, and I literally took notes of what foods I need to be eating more to help balance my thyroid and rewound it a couple of times, too. Thank you so much for sharing so much, so much knowledge, y'all. So, gang, here are my three biggest takeaways when it comes to your thyroid health. 
Okay, so thyroid conditions can be a secondary side effect of another issue that might be going on. Golly, I never even thought about that. I thought it was something was wrong with your thyroid and then it gave you some other symptoms within your body. So I think, you know, sometimes we're just quick to like take a pill to try to like mask what's really wrong, but you really have to dig deeper system you know, systemically and see what is going on with your body. And your thyroid is a really good indicator to help you figure that out. And working with um, someone who is an expert specifically trained on thyroid health, like with like Shannon is, would be a really great start. My second biggest takeaway, food, stress, and sleep. Holy moly. <laughs> Those three, in my opinion, can really throw off that thyroid health. You know, what type of foods are you eating? I loved all the foods that she listed with all of the different um, uh, uh, nutrients, vitamins that can help balance out that thyroid. Your stress loop, oh my gosh, cortisol. Stress will manif manifest itself physically and Trust me, I have felt this before, especially with sleep. I haven't been getting a lot of really good sleep lately, and I know I've been off balance a little bit physically because of it. Sleep is one of the most vital things you can do for your health. I have spoken in depth on the podcast before about sleep issues my husband has had years past and what he's done to help remedy that over time. Girl, food, stress, and sleep. Get it under control. You can do that by working with me within Self Transform You. And then lastly, I think this is my biggest takeaway, and I really want you to listen with this um, with an open heart, is to be your own advocate. When I shared that, um, you know, I, I thought something was off with my thyroid. I thought something was off just knowing my body and knowing what I was going through at the time and knowing just what I know as a fitness professional. And... <laughs> I didn't tell you this, um, I didn't tell Shannon in this interview, but when I went to my doctor, she's like, well, you just need to exercise more and take in less calories. <laughs> that was the solution. Exercise more and take in less calories. Like, luckily I have the whereabouts, know abouts in my mind being, um, in the wellness industry to be like, no, and that's diet culture. That's harmful. What you just told me. <laughs> and, you know, we even tested my thyroid and it was just barely off, but they weren't able to do that just because of whatever standard tests they take. I asked to have some extra blood work actually taken during that appointment and they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. It wasn't until I saw a functional doctor that we were able to um, systemically get down to what was causing some of the thyroid imbalances for me and some other things going on that I mentioned um, in the interview with Shannon, but be your own advocate, Okay. If you go to your doctor and you're like, mm, I don't know, you don't feel good about the the um, suggestions they give you, unless you know there's time and a place for modern medicine, obviously. But if you feel like there's something deeper going on, keep digging. Don't just take it at face value. Keep digging because it is your health, it is your body, it is your intuition, right? You know what is up with your body. If something just isn't right, you don't feel like you're being heard. Be your own advocate and go after for those answers for someone maybe who is an expert in thyroid health or maybe seeking out a functional doctor to help you as well. So Shannon, thank you so much for this conversation. I think so many women, you know, suffer with thyroid imbalances. So I hope this was super informative for you and helps you feel empowered, friend, to go out and find those answers if you feel like you are having a thyroid imbalance as well. If you want to connect with Shannon, there's always a link in the show notes to connect with my guest. I know she would love for you to listen to the Thriving Thyroid podcast as well. So friends, don't forget about that workshop on jealousy and overcoming jealousy and three easy habits that I'm going to share with you in the group. You can go to the link in the show notes to join the Facebook group. It's this Wednesday, the 27th at 12 p.m. Eastern. If you can't watch the live, still come over, be part of the group because you can watch the replay and you can check out the guide section for previous workshops as well. So sending you all lots of love as always, and I'll see you here next week. Hey girl, 
out real quick before you go. If you love today's show and know your girlfriends need to hear this message too, then grab a screenshot, post it to your Instagram stories, and tag me at Emily Nichols Tutu. Because the more mamas out there hearing this message, the more empowered we'll all feel to take care of ourselves so we can pour from a full cup. Or the number one way you can thank me for this podcast is to leave a rating and review in iTunes. That way, more mamas will find the show here too. Love you and appreciate you, girlfriends. See you next time.